Hey y'all, Doc here. Welcome to Whip Tips. If you're curious about the Rugged Ridge heavy duty steering kit with damper included for your Jeep Cherokee, then this is the video for you. Let's get started. All right, y'all. Um, so welcome to this next episode of Whip Tips, I don't know what number this is, 17, something like that. Um, finally got warm here where I am. It's been cold as hell for the past week. So anyway, over this last week or so, I've uh, been engaged in another um, uh, interesting Facebook, let's call it a discussion, about uh, heavy-duty steering and one-ton steering and which brands are good, which brands are bad. And uh, I'll tell you right now, I'm running... Um, RT heavy duty steering, which I think I've mentioned in past videos. I do not recommend that. RT is basically Crown um, Automotive, and uh, a lot of the stuff I've gotten from Crown has just been garbage. And the RT heavy duty steering, I find they um, the the tie rod ends, the ball joint part with the stud, does not fit the steering knuckle the way it should, and it winds up going way too far in pinches the boots, rips the boots up, so you wind up getting dust and dirt and grime into your into your ball joint, and that's not what you want. So I do not recommend that set. I had, when I first got my Jeep and started working on it, I bought um, a, uh, a set from Rugged Ridge. Their heavy-duty steering, which is quite a bit more beefy. The problem there is, though, that you need wheels that don't have a lot of backspace. And I'm still running my factory wheels, which have like four and a half, four and three quarters inches of backspace, somewhere around there. So the um, it, it wouldn't fit. My When I turned hard to the left, the uh, passenger side wheel was basically scraping up against the uh, the end of the, um, the actual uh, tie rod uh, that crosses from knuckle to knuckle. And uh, it's, um, it's basically crossover steering, which is great, but it just wouldn't fit. Well, recently um, I got spacers because the back of my tire, and I think I did this in the last video, I showed you all how to install spacers, was rubbing up against my, um, my control arms. So I'll put a picture of that here. And uh, so once I put those spacers in, an inch and a half, that reduced the amount of back space to the point where I can actually use my, my rugged ridge steering. Now here's the interesting thing and what happened on the Facebook Facebook uh, forum. Um, turns out, you know, I've done a, a video earlier about the kinds of people you meet in these forums. One thing I didn't realize and, and uh, I'll mention here is um, I left out a category and that category is the owners of, uh, of companies that fabricate heavy-duty steering, one-ton steering, etc. That's right, I ran into one of them. And at first, I was just, you know, it was weird. I was getting piled on for mentioning that I was going to try Rugged Ridge. And uh, and uh, and then finally, it occurred to me, this is so weird. So one, I asked one of the guys, do you work for, I'm not going to name the company, but I said, do you work for that company? And he goes, no, I own it. And that's when I realized, you know, he had been he had been crapping all over the Rugged Ridge setup. And, uh, and that's when I realized, you know, you got to be careful out there, guys. Um, I have no doubt that if you want to a real beefy off-road XJ, that you want to go with these, you know, these made in the USA fabricator type setups. Some of them, though, are really expensive. And um, unless you've got the dough, it's not realistic. But if you plan on going off-road and doing rock crawling and stuff like that, you know, you, you need to go that extra mile because you need something that's really, really, really um, heavy duty and one ton. But if you're only running like 30s, uh, or stock tires, I'm running 30s, which is barely more than a stock tire, um, or maybe even 31s, you don't necessarily need one ton steering, especially if you're not going off-road. And I, I rarely, you know, I haven't yet taken mine off-road because, quite frankly, getting, getting my XJ from junkyard to, to drivable has been quite an ordeal. And I'm not, you know, I've spent so much time and money on it, I don't want to take it off-road and break it at this point. So, my point is, I don't need, you know, a five, six, seven hundred dollar steering setup in my XJ. But I also don't want the RT. And that's where something like the um, the the Rugged Ridge setup would, would come into play. And so just just to do a quick comparison of, of cost and everything, um, really, really fast. So just for a quick comparison, I'm doing this off the top of my head. I hope I get the details right. Um, there, I looked really quickly at two setups that I like. 
One is uh, from Aries, and they have a steel uh, DOM tube set up. I think it's one and a quarter across, one and a quarter or one and a half inches across, and a uh, quarter inch uh, wall thickness. So it's steel tube uh, drawn over mandrel and uh, with those dimensions. So it's um, it's pretty nice. I mean, that's, that's pretty strong steel right there. It's also got jam nuts and one ton tie rod ends that you can buy online, Moog, whatever. There are a bunch of different brands. And that's what I've got here is just an example of the kind of the kind of tie rod end you'd be working with if you got an Aries setup. So that's it right there. The other end, the high end, was the um, Stinky Fab. Everybody talks about Stinky Fab, so I thought I'd take a look at them. And that's also a one-ton steering setup. Um, it's not a Heim joint setup. It's uh, it's basically uses look much like this right here. Um, you know, standard ball joint stud tie rod ends, and um, you can either get their specific. Um, tie rod ends with a warranty for life if you buy the premium kit, or you can go with ones like this and buy their budget, budget kit. I think their budget kit comes in at 400 and something dollars uh, with no, um, with no uh, what's it called, steering damper. And that's the same with Aries, no steering damper um, with tie rod ends. Uh, it's basically a bare bones kit, bare bones setup. That was, I think, they're going on sale right now for 330 or something like that, which is, quite frankly, that's a great deal. If you've got the money and time right now, go get it from Aries. I would, I would recommend that. That's a good price. Because I paid, um, from Quadratech, I paid $350 a year or two ago for, um, for the uh, Rugged Ridge setup. And that's what I'm holding right here is one of the tie rod ends for Rugged Ridge. But just comparing a Rugged Ridge tie rod end to um, the, this Moog tie rod end for one ton steering. This is seven eighths of an inch, and I believe this is one inch across. This is, this is absolutely more, more uh, heavy duty. Um, slightly wider diameter here, and the actual end itself is, is pretty, um, pretty strong looking, and, and uh, I, I like the look of this. So if I had to do it over again, I'd buy Aries, but <clears throat> too late, I already had Rugged Ridge, so I'm gonna give that a try. One of the other reasons why you might want to go with Rugged Ridge is that it is also DOM steel with the same dimensions as the Aries setup, right? So um, it's quarter inch thickness steel, um, but there are a couple of things that make it a little bit weaker than the Aries setup. So if you look at that, it's they, they, they cut a slot right there, and that's because Rugged Ridge, the way they have it set up, you use these clamps to tighten the tie rod ends in place as opposed to a jam nut. I don't like that. It's that's suboptimal. These things can these things can fail. This can fail. That's why I think that I'm okay with the rugged ridge as long as I'm just driving on the highway. I'm not sure I would want to use this for any serious off-roading. So keep that keep that in mind. Um, so the other thing with the Aries setup versus rugged ridge, rugged ridge, you just install this under the knuckle and you're good to go. It fits in under the knuckle, and um, you don't have to do any reaming or anything like that. With both the Aries and the Stinky Fab, you're going to have to do some reaming. Um, the, this right here, the dimensions of this stud are too wide. Oh, sorry, that's my rugged ridge stud. I already put away the other stud. The dimensions of the, um, the one-ton studs are too wide for the knuckle, the hole that's in there for the knuckle, so you have to ream that out. Um, and uh, you'll also, I believe, when I priced it out for Stinky Fab, Again, with no steering damper, um, it was it was really close to 500 bucks for everything I would need, including um, a bracket that would fit on their aluminum system. That's the other thing about Stinky Fab is theirs is made of an aluminum instead of steel. Of course, the first question is is aluminum. Um, you know, the 7075 alloy that they use is that stronger than steel? Well, you can't really ask that question that simply. It's a lot of things go into comparing. Um, you know, strength to weight ratio, I'm sure that uh, Stinky Fab wins, but in terms of overall strength, steel is pretty damn strong. It's just that it's heavier. So I would bet that uh, Aries is probably stronger than what you're getting with, um, with Stinky Fab, but don't quote me on that. Um, I haven't looked at any, any kind of engineering studies or research on 7075, but overall, if I had to, between those three, Rugged Ridge, Aries, and Stinky Fab, Here's, here's where I would go. If you're primarily or exclusively using your Jeep as a daily driver, Rugged Ridge is not a bad kit for you, but hold off on that because I'm going to install it and test it. Maybe it'll fail. I don't know. So keep stay tuned for future videos. I'm going to test this for all you guys so you don't have to invest your money. I'll tell you right now, 
if I had known at the time that you can get an Aries kit for so cheap, uh, I would have gone with Aries. It's definitely, you know, it, it doesn't have these slots right here. Um, it definitely uses one ton tie rods. Uh, it's absolutely heavy duty. It uses jam nuts instead of these clamps here. Um, just overall more solid. And if you did decide to go off road in once in a while, you'd be pretty safe doing so. Um, so Aries is, of, of the three, I would say Aries is the best deal. Second best though, again, assuming you're just, you're just going, you know, doing mostly daily driving with occasional off-road or something, um, this, I, I think Rugged Ridge is where I would go next. Uh, but again, not tested yet. I have to test this out and, and see how long it lasts, if it holds up. Um, but just, just, and I'd say that just based on price point. Um, there's no way I'm going to spend $500 for a, a setup from, from Stinky Fab, um, and, uh, and, and do all the work that's involved with, with reaming it out, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's just not worth it to me if I have to choose between, you know, Aries, Rugged Ridge, or Stinky, Stinky Fab. Like I said, Aries wins, hands down. Um, and I'm going to use Rugged Ridge because I'm just using it as a daily driver right now. And in the future, maybe I'll save up for Stinky Fab. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, there are people out there swear by Stinky Fab, and I'm probably getting names confused as I go through this, but there are people out there who swear by Stinky Fab, and, um, you know, your mileage may vary. Maybe maybe there is a scenario where you absolutely need what Stinky Fab is offering, and uh, that's definitely the way to go. I'm just saying for my budget constraints and for how I plan on using my XJ, it's not necessary. You know, that high-end 7075 aluminum setup is definitely not necessary. It looks to me that on paper, uh, Aries gives me everything I would need to do some serious off-roading and, and not to beat a dead horse, but since I'm only really driving this as a daily driver right now, I'm guessing Rugged Ridge will, will meet my needs for the, for the foreseeable future. But again, to be continued on that front. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and um, disassemble my existing steering and then install the Rugged Ridge setup. All right, so before I get started, I want to show you all what I'm talking about in terms of, see how that is, um, that uh, right there, this is the RT setup that's currently in, in installed in my Jeep. See how that boot right there is getting pinched? You can see all the grease and stuff getting pushed out. And I think um, on one side it could be tearing, although I might be wrong. Um, and then look at this side, how different it is, how on this side it's, it's um, there's a bigger gap, etc. Those studs just aren't... They didn't machine on the right dimensions. I've seen other people with the same complaint. So again, RT, it's fine if it's all you got, but uh, I would definitely be careful with it and I won't be running it again if I can help it. So anyway, at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove that uh, castle nut and um, uh, whatever that clip is called that goes in, in there. What the heck are those things called? <laughs> whatever, these things right here. I'm going to be pulling those clips out, removing the castle nuts on either side. Then I'll remove the castle nut from up here at the pitman arm. And lastly, I'll be taking off this damper and uh, putting all this stuff in a box uh, just in case I can sell it or do something with it. I don't know. I won't be throwing it away. But anyway, let's go ahead and do that. I'm not going to show you the details because um, you can look on, on previous videos of mine and how to disassemble steering and everything. So anyway, let's get going. So first thing I'm going to do, I forgot, is um, I'm going to get this measuring, basically. I'm comparing Zerk to Zerk uh, with my RT versus the uh, the Rugged Ridge steering setup. And um, that way, it'll be pretty close when uh, when I take it to get aligned. 
and I'll try and do something similar for the, um, I can't, really can't do it, the same thing for the uh, steering centering because um, it attaches in a different place. So I just have to do that after. But anyway, uh, I am going to take this to get aligned professionally and get them to center the steering as well. So it looks like I got a little bit to, uh, these are threaded in opposite directions. So I'm trying to figure out if I can remember. Right is loose in this case. Three, four, five. And then left is loose down here. One, two, three, four, five. All right. That's about it. Now comes the uh, installation part of the rugged ridge setup and um, basically what we're looking at here is um, a couple of things we're going to install the same way I did my last steering setup and I'll try and link to those videos here again and uh, one thing to keep in mind though that they're you know one of the drawbacks of the Rugged Ridge system is that people have complained about a dead spot in the steering. And so what Rugged Ridge did was include a couple of washers. And um, unfortunately, I already did this like a year ago, so I, I can't film doing it. But I took those washers. Um, you pull the boots off of the tie rod ends that connect to the tie rod. This goes all the way across from one steering knuckle to the other, since this is crossover. And... Um, uh, you take the boots off. They've got some wire retainers, uh, spring retainers that you have to deal with. And then uh, pull the boots up and off over the um, the stud. So take the boots completely off. You, you put the washers down around the studs. They go all the way and fit snugly against the base. And then you put the boots back on and the spring retainers back on. So I, I went ahead and already did that. And that's supposed to take care of... Uh, this dead spot, but we'll see. The other thing that happens with crossover quite a bit, and this is not just Rugged Ridge. <laughs> is uh, bump steer. And um, I guess the only, from what I've read and, uh, and talked with people on forums, that's mainly just keeping your track bar parallel with your, um, with your drag link. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how that is at the end, but let's go ahead and get this, this uh, tie rod installed.
Looks good so far. We're gonna do cotter pins and torque at the very end. Next, let's move on to the, the drag link. And one thing I'll mention at this point too is that um, with, uh, with, you know, rugged ridge system is no different from Aries or, uh, or Stinky Fab where if you've got an aftermarket diff cover, I've got a couple of inches of clearance here, but that can be a problem. Aftermarket diff covers can come further out and knock against your, your tie rod here. I'm not gonna have that problem. Let's, here's hoping that it, um, that my, uh, what's it called? Uh, drag link won't uh, interfere with the, um, with the track bar here. I don't think it will, just looking at the geometry, but you never know. All right, so about to assemble the, uh, the drag link. And one thing I wanna point out here is that with the kit, you get this, that um, tie rod end over there, which has an elbow in it and a hole for the bottom part of the drag link to attach to. And um, you co it comes with two tie rod ends that are kind of short. See where my thumb is right there? Uh, that's where the threads begin, and there's not much room between the actual, um, you know, ball joint area and the threads. And only one comes like this, and on this one, it's longer. There's a further distance to the threads. You see that? That one, according to the instructions, attaches there to the um, to the elbow in the the bottom part of the, or to the elbow in the, uh, in the tie rod end. So the bottom of the drag link should have this longer kind of, uh, extension here on the tie rod end itself. So if, uh, if anybody knows different, please leave a comment and let me know. But I think that's, that's what it looks like in the directions. So let's keep going. The other thing I wanted to mention and, and forgot to is that Rugged Ridge is actually an Omix Ada brand. So not great quality overall, uh, plenty of complaints about Omix Ada. But at the same time, just looking at this, it doesn't seem that bad. But again, time's going to tell. We'll see. We'll see if I regret this move. All right. Let's go ahead and get this going. This, like I said, the end with the extension is going to... Let me check the directions real quick because I'm going to see if that goes... Pretty sure it goes in from the top. I don't know what I'm thinking. Never mind. Let's take this off. Take this castle nut off. And take the castle nut off the other side. All right, and that goes there. Huh, right away, I wonder if there's gonna be a problem here with clearance, see that? That's not right. What a pain in the butt. I'm gonna have to move one of those. I'm gonna have to move one of these. I'll probably move it this way a little bit, but I don't wanna move it too far. So I'll probably move them both in opposite directions. Strike one against Rugged Ridge. Again, this is why jam nuts are superior. Well, it's not the only reason why they're superior, but another reason why they're superior. Okay, I'm definitely not going to have a problem with um, the drag link interfering with the operation of my uh, my um, track bar. That's good. Right there. Look at the <laughs> look at that. <laughs> because of those stupid clamp system, that stupid clamp system they use. So we're going to take this off. We're going to do a couple of things according to the, the um, instructions. It looks like it's shorter. here. So I'm going to pull this out a little bit further. There we go. All right. And I'm going to have to
problem with this is it's so Paint these now, son of a gun. All right, I'm gonna have to hammer this down this way because it's still gonna be problematic. I mean, look at this. Like, good luck adjusting this. Like, this has got to be one of the stupidest designs I've ever seen. You're supposed to be able to unscrew these, right? Like this, adjust it like this, turning turning the actual um, tube, right? But how are you going to do that when you've got this interfering there and this interfering there? No, uh, this is ridiculous. This is the one of the dumbest setups I've ever seen. I'm going to run this till one of the... Uh, one of the things fails, and then I'm uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get Aries. All right, so uh, had some time to recharge my GoPro and uh, get everything set up for the next part, which is installing this guy. So we're gonna reuse the bolt that we took out earlier. Um, that's the wrong side. This is uh, the side that's gonna go in um, onto the axle, and I'm gonna leave this bubble wrap on it just to protect the outside while I do the installation and then I'll cut it off at the end. Um, or I might just take it off now because this is kind of a pain in the ass. But anyway, so it's going to go in like that. Uh, but first what we have to do is install this bracket right here. And you can see from, um, from this angle, it slopes down like that. That downward slope, it's basically going to go in like this with the U-bolts facing up, essentially. Uh, actually, I may face them down just so that uh, it's easy to adjust and everything um, from this angle. But the point is that this sloped part here has to face toward the back, basically. Slope down toward the back. And um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to stop filming and I'm going to take these off just to get everything ready and then I'll, then I'll start the camera again. All right, well, I'm going to have to change what I just said. So, uh... 
this definitely goes like this, like I indicated, but the U-bolts um, do have to go in through the bottom and face up. I, I don't know if they have to or not, but that's what the instructions say, and I'm just going to do it. So they go in through like that, and you've got washers and then uh, nylon uh, lock nuts. These are 13 millimeters. I'm not gonna tighten it all the way. I'm just gonna get it um, kind of, a, not even snug, just barely on there. And uh, that way I can adjust the actual damper uh, before I snug everything down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this now. <sighs> Washer, washer, nut. Other U bolt washer or U bolt washer washer nut nut. I don't know if y'all can see this, but the let me tilt this up a little bit more. I got a problem with a oil seal in the front right underneath my harmonic balancer. It may be time to do the timing anyway in this thing. I don't know. Anyway, 13 millimeter socket. Wish I had a short 13 millimeter socket. Move on to the other one, just to make sure I'm doing this even. And you know what? At first, I don't have to have it there. I can just do it from here. All right. A little too far. side. good enough for now. Now, yeah, I am going to take this off because it is too much of a hassle. All right, so we're going to put this in. Let me You do have to adjust this so like you don't want to pull this all the way out but probably just mid-range since my wheels are straight right now 
I want to find kind of the middle, right? And that's where I'm going to attach it. But for right now, I'm going to let it hang down for a second. I'm a big believer if, uh, if something comes with the kit, you should use it because it's included for a reason. And this kit did come with a rubber boot, so... <clears throat> Do yourself a favor, do this before you install. I'm gonna stop filming for a second so I don't waste space and I'm gonna get this on. Now, I'm judging from smudge marks on the uh, drag link where I need to be for the midpoint. So you might want to use a paint pen or something like that to give yourself a point of reference to make sure you keep it at what looks like the middle. All right, so you know what I did? I forgot again. Let me... That washer's on. That washer needs to go on. There we go. All right. I'm just gonna get this finger tight and then I'm gonna start tightening up the bracket. You bolt. And you can always adjust this after, um, afterward when you uh, 
you know, after you get your steering aligned and everything and you notice you're not turning all the way in one direction or whatever, you can always come back and adjust this. Now, there may be torque specs for this. I don't know. I'm not going to torque it. I'm just making it good and tight. All right. There we go. And it's turning because I haven't torqued the... Uh, the clamps yet that's why it's turning so I'll come back after I torque those and test this make sure it's make sure it's nice and snug all right so that's pretty much it um, at this point what you're gonna do is you're going to torque these to 60 um, no sorry the clamps go to 35 foot-pounds and the castle nuts go to 60 and I believe that's right let me check These clamps, according to the instructions, 35 foot-pounds, all the clamps, right? But be careful when you're torquing these things, because I know with other kits that I've done, sometimes these bolts just, the clamps start to, to give and the bolts aren't that great. And if you torque it down to 35, you'll wind up snapping the bolt. So just be careful while you do that. And according to the instructions, all of these castle nuts need to be um, torqued down to 60 foot-pounds. And uh, then don't forget to insert your cotter pins. Um, and, then, uh, and then when you're done with that, they have grease zerks on each of these. Um, go ahead and pump some grease in there. It didn't come with much, so I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to put some grease in there when I'm done. But, um, and then that's it. And uh, there's a decal you can put in this thing, but I'm going to wait until um, I've had it aligned. So I'm going to torque. I'm going to grease. I've got four clamps to torque to 35. I've got one, two, three, four castle nuts to torque to 60. Then I'm gonna grease, and, um, and then I'm taking it for a professional alignment, and your job is done. Look, as far as looks goes, I like it. It's a, it's a good looking kit. It looks very similar to a lot of the one ton steering setups that you can get from other places like I talked about earlier. Um, but uh, I can tell you right now, I'm saving up for the Aries kit, and uh, I'm gonna have that on standby if and when this thing dies so that I can just go ahead and ream out the steering knuckles and, uh, and put in a true one-ton steering kit. But for now, for daily driving, I think this is going to be okay, but time will tell. I'm going to come back and give you updates, and uh, I'll let you know. So that's it. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe. Doc out. Oh, you made it to the end. That, that's awesome. Listen, I'm Doc. Uh, I'm the one who's, you know, the voice behind these videos. And I really appreciate you taking the time to actually watch the whole thing. That's fantastic. If you've got time, if you want to, if you like the video, hit like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the bell button so you, you know, you get notified of new videos when I put them up. I'm going to try and do one a week. And I do, I'm going to do a bunch of Instagram stuff. So make sure you follow me there and on Twitter. Uh, Instagram's going to be the shorter stuff. I don't have any merchandise yet. I plan, I'm planning to as the channel grows. If I succeed, I'll get some merch. For now, if you really want to help me in another way, you like these videos enough, I'm going to put links to my books in the description of the video. I'm a science fiction author in my, in my spare time as well, so I do, I'm juggling a lot of balls. But anyway, I really appreciate it. hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you at the next one. Hey, do me a favor and turn this junk off. I, I, I don't know how to deal with tech.